a commentary a week ago tomorrow. Nice. So we sat and watched the film together again for, the, for another time. How was it? Oh, we love each other. I've worked with Bernard uh, twice. We just did a version of Frankenstein that came out about two years ago. And unfortunately, we had a bad distributor, but uh, Rotten Tomatoes had a 99% rating. So if you ever get a chance to see it, check it out. Oh, yeah. Play a blind blues man. Blind blues man, yeah. people. Like in the second, uh, in the brighter Frankenstein. Now, is there any thoughts in the works as bringing Candyman back? Yeah, there's always. Bernard wants to do a final coda before they get around to doing a reboot. And uh, it would be one in which uh, Virginia and I reunited, but nothing's set in stone, folks. You know, people ask me straightforward questions. I have to speak from my heart. I believe in calling it into being. Right. So it's not set, but that's what Bernard and I in Virginia would love to do. Cross your fingers, people. Yeah, let's cross it. I mean, it's about time. Yes. If they did what? How many How many leprechauns do they do? <laughs> Eleven? Oh, yeah. But and you know what? I'll stand by the one that we did, the first two in particular. Uh, it's sort of, uh, I'm not going to say it changed my career, but it certainly put a coda on it. And for the horror fans, I deeply appreciate their love of the, uh, the film. And when I was in New Jersey, I was talking with Andrew Devolve, mm -hmm. and I was... I, a good friend. Yes, he's a very good gentleman, and I asked him, you know, what was it like, you know, working on Wishmaster with you, Robert England, and Kane Hodder, and he said it was such a treat and such a delight. Yeah. Well, and, you know, everybody left their ego behind. Actors that work, that have longevity, they don't have, you know, they don't let bullshit ego get in their way. You can't. Right. You have to be a human being first. I'm a father. I have two beautiful children. Uh, lovely partner. I wish she was here. Uh, you know, and I just keep it straight and narrow. And we rescue cats in the meantime. We have three currently. Oh, wow. Yeah. I am a cat person myself. Yeah, I, love them. I, love them. I actually just got a three-month-old kitten myself. Did you? What color? Uh, she's a tortoise. Nice. Nice. And she loves you. Oh, yeah. And as soon as you walk in the house, you know it. Oh, you know, she's support. sleeping on my chest. There you go. I love The entire night. That. And they start purring and stuff, and you get that heartbeat, and you know you're alive, folks. Yes. Stay alive. 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 It's alive. <laughs> <laughs> and a fun fact that people probably don't know that Tony was the voice of the Fallen in Transformers um, Revenge of the Fallen. Why don't they know that? Transformers is one of the biggest movie franchises in the world. But, you know, yeah, I, Michael Bay, who I worked with on The Rock, uh, invited after 10 years passing, he invited me, he said, Tony, would you like to come play? Would you like to be a big, massive robot? Would you like to be the title character in my second Transformers film? I said, hell yeah. So, and voiceover work has been another, uh, in the last five years or so, I've been carving it out more. Like we just did a Scooby-Doo. Yep. You know, I mean, I try to do the things that I find are cool for me as a kid. Uh, I did a huge DC project two weeks ago. Can't tell you what it is. Nowadays, you can't even talk about the shit you're doing. It's insane. But it's a huge, it took two years to make this. And kids of all ages are going to love it. And I play a massive villain in it. Yeah, because you, you did the uh, Lego DC superheroes That's Justice right. League versus Bizarro and Legion of Doom. Legion of Doom and Zoom on CW Flash. And another fun fact, which Andrew um, Devolve also told me that he did a voice on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. No shit. Awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> wow, so we're both in the same game. Yeah. That's awesome. I never knew that. <laughs> Who did he play? I, I don't remember. Oh, wow. I got to say a lot of uh, pop sucker in that, in that <laughs> video game. For all the eight-year-old kids that live in the basement out there, play Call of Duty. Do not pick up a real gun and go to your high school and just randomly shoot people. We got to stop this insanity. I am sick and tired of it. Every time we turn on the TV, kids, kids are killing people. I remember when I was a kid, we didn't have to worry about it. I enjoyed going to school. I wanted to learn something. I didn't worry about anything. When I was younger, didn't okay. have to worry about that either. Jesus Christ. I'm worried about our humanity, but that's another subject. Yes. Now, when Adam Green talk, you know, approached you about playing Reverend Zombie in Hatchet 1 and 2, mm -hmm. that was an extraordinary type of role to play. 
Um, it's totally different type of character. It was um, fun. Had a blast. Adam is a wonderful director and a better human being. Yes. I had I had met him like two years before he made Hatchet, and he was a fan. And he came to the table, but he also loved film. And we spent a good half hour at the table to the chagrin of the other people waiting in line, just talking about film and the process. And then when he made it happen, I was so proud for him. Because, you know, working in film is a, I don't want to say it's a privilege, but it, it, it's a calling. And a lot of people want to do film. A lot of people want to be actors, directors, producers, but few are chosen. So if you have the opportunity, you got to count your blessings and just dig into the work and the process. Exactly. And um, let's see here. Now, you were also in Death House, which um, was, you know, yes, okay. it, was a, it was a great movie. You know, who's who in horror? I mean, you, right. you name the name in horror, they're in it. I think Gunner would have definitely been proud well, of the outcome. Gunner Hansen was the primary reason I agreed to do that, because he was a dear friend of mine. And I know, and he had spoke to me about this project before he passed. You know, folks, uh, life uh, is precious. It belongs to no one. Yes. I got a, my oldest cat is 17, and he's starting to slow down now, and I'm giving him extra attention. So you just never know when it's going to vanish. So you got to deal with what you do, yep. do it truthfully, do it fully, 100%, 110%. If you don't show up, then don't bother. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? When I run for president, I'm going to be there every <laughs> single day. Yeah, you definitely make a great president. I mean, the one we got now, I'm not yeah, even going to get on the topic about, about that. It. Let's not talk about it because it's dividing <laughs> our country, and I just want to go back to a simpler time. Exactly. Now, oh, loved everybody. Yeah. No more division, folks. That's one thing about horror. It unites horror fans are the most uh, unified bunch of people. They, they love it, they support it. I hear that a lot. We just did Sid and he said the exact same thing, yeah, word by Sid's word. a good man. I mean, it, it's a, uh, and unfortunately in Hollywood, horror has a stigma to it, you know, even though they make them constantly and they make a lot of money from it. Did you see A Quiet Place? Yes. I love that film. Yeah. And I, and John Krasinski did a fabulous job in creating a new millennium. I love the monsters, I love the scares. It was like true, you know, not shock them a lot, but true, genuine, genuineness. So now, there's hope. You've done everything from TV to film to Broadway. Yeah. Um, the theater is my first love. That's where I started. I got my master's from Trinity Rep Conservatory in Providence. Got my equity card within two weeks of moving to New York. And I always go back to theater. That's just nothing like theater. Live theater is the shazit. <laughs> okay. It's the shazit. Well, you just answered my question right there. I was going to say, which do you love theater. doing? Theater. theater. Theater, film, TV, in that order. Well, voiceover is in there somewhere. But theater is... Theater is my you know, they're doing uh, Beetlejuice for Broadway. Oh, really? I wish I could sing better because I would <laughs> die to play that role on Broadway. Beetlejuice alone, and uh, they're actually finally doing the remake of Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton in it. That's awesome. Did you see that he did a commencement speech the other day? No. At, uh, I forgot what college, but at the end of it, he said, I'm Batman. And it brought <laughs> down the house, mostly from the parents of the students, but it's all good. I yeah. thought Birdman was fantastic. Oh, yeah. But, you know, hands down, with all the Batman films that have been out there, Michael Keaton was the best Batman. Not Val Kilmer? And not Christian Bale either. And um, no one could. No, be. he was Jack, pure. Jack, Jack is the Joker. Was pure. It was just pure. It was fun. Yes. You know, you gotta. Sometimes too much seriousness can kill a cockroach. Now you've been uh, doing a lot of filming lately. Uh, yeah, with, I mean, this has been a busy year. West of Hell. Requiem. 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 Yes. Uh, yes, uh, with my dear friend Paul Moore is right there. That film is four years in the can, but it is coming out. I play an exorcist uh, a priest in that one. But even more exciting, uh, I have four projects that are going to drop in October, November this year. Mainstream films. I did a film with Gail Ann Hurd. Uh, it's going to be a new franchise. I can't tell you the title, but do the homework. Um, 
I just wrapped two days on a Jeffrey Reddick product. Jeffrey created Final Destination, so that's another possible franchise. I don't fuck around. Uh, and then a miniseries for MTV. And a comedy with Cat Williams. Cat Williams? Yeah, crazy ass Cat Williams. <laughs> I love Cat Williams. He's, he's, he's missing a screw, but he's a delicious <laughs> screw. He's genuine. He's a genuine brother. And, you know, one of our fan questions was, is what do you, you know, do for fun? Obviously, you mentioned about cats. Yeah, I, I'm a pinball uh, machine collector. Oh, wow. I, when I was in college, I hustled my way, got, made many a meal. Knowing I put the edge on the Gottlieb machines and the Williams machines. Uh, yeah, gardening, cooking. I'm a, think of myself as a minor chef. Uh, I'm just living life. So what are you making me for dinner then? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> I don't have a stove here. All right. Uh, now, um, one other fan question, which I, I thought was this kind of... This came from your site? Yes. For one and oh. okay. Yes. Uh, we've had numerous submissions, but wow. the, this one kind of caught my eye just because I thought it was a silly question. But right. they said, um, were the bees in Candyman real? And if so, did you ever get stung? <laughs> Uh, I say to that person, do they look real? They absolutely were friggin' real. Okay, we had over almost a million bees on set. Oh, wow. I had to work with a crazy bee wrangler, Norman Gary, who has assured me that I wouldn't get stung. But basically, every time we did a scene, he had to put the phenarome on me, which is the queen bee thing, so all the little male drones would be attracted to me. That part is fine. Getting them off after the shot is done is the hard part. Basically, they didn't have any technology for that, so they used a little Rayvac, a little Hoover thing. Yeah, yeah. Bees don't like that, so they rebel. So in the course of the three films, I think I got a, maybe 26 stings altogether. But I had a great lawyer at the time, so I got compensated for each and every sting, and I'm not a crook, otherwise it would have been a thousand stings. And I would have had my mega millions. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're working on it. We're working on it, folks. I just want, listen, I know when I say things like there's four films and I can't tell you the titles, trust me, come October and November, four mainstream releases, particularly the Gail Ann Hurd project. The director of it is the was the editor of Get Out. That's how huge it is. Oh, Get Out was a great flick. Wasn't it? Yes. Was, and Jordan Peele just announced his new film. It's untitled, but it's a new nightmare. And I'm trying to do what I can to edge my way in. Excellent. Yeah. Well, well see, that's just wishful thinking. Well, we're going to cut this interview short because... Uh, you got, you're a busy man. you got tons of people to see. Oh, yes. And uh, CJ... I coke over there. Uh, I think my little steak that somebody else cooked is waiting for me. CJ Graham told me to tell you hello. I love CJ. The beautiful thing about the horror community... Uh, there's very few animosities. People respect what people have done. We see each other, you know, sometimes too infrequently. But in the we conventions, see, you get to can, reconnect with re your friends. Reconnect, not only the friends, but the fans, which, you know, without the fans, none of us would be here. Exactly. So I respect you and your, and your website. You better pay attention and follow this mofo on Twitter and Facebook or whatever else he does. All right, everybody. This is Sean, and we again we're at Sean. Days of the Dead, Charlotte, North Sean. Carolina. Any last words for your fans? Hey guys, uh, if you're in the Charlotte area, come on down to DOTD and check us out. And if not, some of us will be appearing at the city near you. And keep watching the movie screen and the TV screens. Thank you, everybody.